Hey, this is Russ. You know, I made a video on Monday. Today is Wednesday by the time you see this. And uh, I got a comment sent to me via email by patient number 9M from Pennsylvania. <laughs> so I wanted to share his comments with you because he brings up some good points that maybe we should uh, consider. Okay. So uh, it's quite a few here. So I'm just going to read this right off of the screen behind the computer again. <laughs> it's easier that way. <laughs> I always take the easy route out. You guys know that. Okay, so here's what he says. He says, these are just some suggestions that he suggests that we consider before having a knee replacement, okay? So the first thing he says, uh, do your homework and not only on what is involved in getting your knee replaced, but also in determining who will do your knee replacement surgery. Yeah, I have to wonder if everyone's actually checked out their doctors before they went in and did it, <laughs> all right? So that's important. Number two, uh, are there other options like a partial knee replacement? Now, this is something not everyone considers. They think that the minute they go in, they should always do a total knee replacement. But yeah, partials are options, okay? Um, number three is, should I wait to get the knee replaced? And if so, how long? Now, that is something I talked about on Monday because I was kind of thinking that had I waited longer, I might feel... Um, that uh, I could finally say it was worth it because the pain would be so bad <laughs> that, that I would actually notice a major improvement in lack of pain, okay? But since I didn't have that, um, yeah, it kind of feels like I, I'll never be able to say it was worth it, okay? Oh, let me bring up another point too. And this is brought up by another viewer. And he said that, well, you know, the timing of when you had your knee replaced, talking about me now, okay? was actually pretty good because um, I had it done, I finished off my, my physical therapy, and then the pandemic hit. So I was locked down by the pandemic anyway. So had, had I waited until the middle of the pandemic, then the timing wouldn't be as good, right? Now that's a good point. <laughs> yeah, I never thought about that. So credit to, uh, to Dan, who is uh, one of our viewers, uh, for pointing that out. And he says also that, you know, all your videos have helped so many other people. Uh, can you really say that it wasn't worth it? In that sense, I would say, yeah, it was worth it. Because I, I think the videos have helped others. And I've heard that from others. So thank you for that. Okay. Let me get back to patient 9M. Okay. Where are we here? Uh, okay. So he says, number two is, uh, are there any other options like a partial knee replacement? And uh, number three is, should I wait to get the knee replaced? And if so, how long? Okay. Number four, he says, uh, does the surgeon you are seeing actually do partial knee replacements? If so, what percentage of the surgeon patient, surgeon's patients get partial knee replacements? Should be at least 20% is what he feels. Okay. So, and again, these are just his opinions, just so that you know, this is not some, some rule of thumb you have to follow, but this is things that he's learned through his journey. Um, so number five, he says, uh, how many knee surgeries does your surgeon do per week and per year? How long has your surgeon been doing partial and full knee replacements? And does the knee surgeons just specialize in knees or do they do other joints in orthopedics? Uh, an example, um, uh, do not use a knee surgeon if he says he only does 7 to 10 knee replacements a year. <laughs> I would agree with that. <laughs> and who also does not do partial knee replacements. Okay, yeah, you got to find out uh, how busy is this doctor. Does he do a lot of it or is he just uh, on occasion he does one or two? Okay, that's that may not be a good one. Okay, not saying that they can't do it, but I'm just saying, you know, find somebody who specializes in it, right? Number six, uh, on a scale of zero to 100, what is my mobility index score pre-surgery, not just the flexion, okay? And and what we're talking about here is, um, you know, just, just because you can bend doesn't mean you can bend well, okay? What is that mobility index score? Um, and seven, he says, what should I expect my mobility index score to be after surgery, after I've completed physical therapy? Again, not just my flexion, okay? So you, you have to look at both flexion and also extension, all right? And how well you do that, not just the, the sheer numbers of it, okay? Uh, number eight, uh, what limitations will I have after surgery? What does the expected uh, limitations fit to what I expect? Now, this is kind of a good point because um, you know, everyone promises you the world that, you know, you'll be better and everything like that. But sometimes we do have some limitations, things we cannot do any longer after the surgery. This is, these are some things you have to kind of think about. Okay. 
Uh, number nine, should I completely avoid sleeping on a recliner? Why or why not? Now, okay, now I had a video about this whole recliner business, okay? I'll link it up here for you guys so you can see that video. Because I kind of feel that, you know, I was only able really to sleep on the recliner and a lot of people feel that too. But the video shows you that, you know, uh, even though you're extending your leg on the recliner, you're not really extending it straight. All right. And, uh, and the video shows, shows that and how I kind of feel maybe if you're going to sleep on that recliner, maybe prop your leg up a little bit differently. Okay, so what I did is I used, uh, uh, well, I didn't do it when I was doing it. This is why I had bad extension. But thinking more about it afterwards, uh, what I'm thinking is maybe put a, uh, a folding chair with some, some towels or something propping your leg up higher, uh, which straightens the leg back out. Because there, even though you're on the recliner, you tend to actually have a slight flexion when you're extending your leg. And that's probably why my extensions weren't that great. This is just my guess, but I think it's a good educated guess, all right? Okay, where are we at here? Number 10, uh, what complications can arise after surgery? Now, this is something that um, I think everyone needs to know that sometimes these surgeries don't go perfectly and yeah, there could be complications, okay? Number 11, what will the pain management plan be after surgery? Yeah, what are you gonna do about that, okay? Uh, number 12, how active should I be pre-surgery? Is there anything that can be done to manage the knee pain pre-surgery, such as uh, knee gel shots or cortisone shots? How long after I receive these shots should I wait to get the knee replaced? Should it be at least three months after you receive your last shot due to infection risks, things like that? So you can't just go and get shots put into your leg or into your knee and then expect okay next week we'll just go get a knee replacement since it didn't work as well okay there's some time involved that you have to wait until that's over with all right um anyways it's just a, a list that he's put together and i think there's some good points here that you should uh, consider uh, looking into if you're getting into a knee replacement all right i don't know whether people go to this extent but uh, he does bring up some good points. Now, for myself, uh, I, I looked into my surgeon uh, long before I had the knee surgery. And like I said, I have long history with him because he, he scoped out my knees, you know, many, many years prior to the actual knee replacement. So anyways, I just wanted to bring that up uh, for all of you because he did bring up some good points. That's patient 9M from Pennsylvania. So thank you very much to him for bringing that to our attention. Anyways, if you like this video, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and we'll talk to you guys next time.